All right, so now we have our frame sequence and we have our style frame um, and it's time to get animating. And so what I'm going to show you now is how to load this frame sequence here into Photoshop and divide it up into layers and just go to town on the scribbling and coloring and all the fun stuff that goes along with rotoscoping. So here I have my original style frame um, and I've also opened up my background elements because I'm going to recreate that background in layers when we load everything together. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to set up your workspace. And um, I posted a couple of links to a animation panel and some presets that are uh, developed by this guy, Stéphane Barry. He's French. He has a bunch of tutorials. Um, he works in with Photoshop, but he also has made the workflow much better by developing these little tool presets. Um, so you can download those, um, watch the tutorials, it's pretty clear how to do it, um, and it does take a few steps, but here on GitHub he has his full instructions, and then he also on Vimeo has instructions how to install and then also how to use. So I highly recommend that, it's going to make your life so much easier. So once you have that installed in Photoshop, um, then we can actually open it up. So here I'm first going to pull up my timeline, and this is where Photoshop actually has um, a timeline. Now there's nothing here yet. Um, I'm going to open up those work those panels. Um, the first one, I'm going to ignore the color one for now. Um, it's not really suiting to my style, so we're just going to use Anim Dazin. And then as you see, there's all these fancy buttons, and they each do a different thing that is good for animation workflow. So I like to take this panel and dock it right above the timeline. Um, and that just gives me easy access to it. So let's get that frame sequence in. And the way we do that is we go to File, Open, and navigate to your folder with your frames. Select the first one. Then down here, there is the option to check this image sequence box. And what this will do is it will import the entire sequence, assuming that it's all named in order, which since we exported from Premiere, it is. Um, and it will import it uh, as a video sequence. And you can designate the frame rate. So we're going to designate this frame rate as 12. And here it shows up in this timeline as a video. So the way that Photoshop works when it deals with sequences is it creates these video groups, which are essentially folders. So it's using the folder structure over here in the layers, if you look at this. And you can see that there's this special little folder that looks like a clapper, um, and inside is this video sequence. There's this thing in, in Photoshop called frame animation, and some people use that. I find it ultimately very confusing because you can't really see each individual frame. It's just sort of like condenses them into 0.2 seconds or something like that. So that's why I like to use the timeline. Um, and using these fancy little buttons, this creates a new video layer and it puts one frame. So if I zoom in, you can see that this is one frame long, right? And it's on top of my original footage. Now if you look over here in the Layers panel, um, you'll see that it's created a new video group and it put that layer in there. Now I can keep adding frames by pressing this button over here and if you look over in the layers, you can see that more single frame layers are being added to that video group. So that's the logic behind the way Photoshop works as an animation tool. Uh, once you've got your head around that, then you can start manipulating things because you can see like I can reorder these frames um, if necessary, or I could copy and paste them if I wanted to repeat a cycle or something like that. I'll show you that in a little bit. Being an animator, I like to see every single frame that I'm working on. Um, so that's why I like to work this way. And these just act like regular Photoshop layers. So you can select one. You have to have it selected. And then you can just start drawing on it like you normally would. You can change the opacity. So I'm going to change the opacity of my original footage like I did before, just so that I can see things. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to select that layer. And I'm going to start tracing with my pencil. Okay, 
So here we have the tracing, basically, um, with a few modifications. So this is just the outline at this stage. Uh, I'm not going to add color yet, but you can see that. But I am going to put in the background as a separate layer now. Um, what you can do for the background stuff is you can just create a still layer. So I'm going to copy this. Here's my original footage there. And let's see. Okay. Um, so note that when I pasted this in as a separate layer, it didn't put it in a video group. Um, it just put it as one layer, and that layer is the length of essentially the entire piece. So if I zoom out, you can see that it goes eh, not all the way to the end, but I can extend this all the way to the end of my footage here. So this means that this still layer of the background is going to be behind all of my drawings. Um, so I can manipulate this just like a Photoshop layer. I'm going to do what I did before, invert it, change the color a bit. Um, then I'm going to bring in that sand texture, make a snowstorm. Extend that to the end there, and there I've got my background. So it's kind of hard to see, so I might actually uh, invert this back for the moment, just so that I can see my drawing a little bit better. And I will turn this layer off, um, and then I can change it back when I need to. Okay, so before I get into tracing every single frame of my animation, I'm going to make a cycling hold for one second at the beginning of my footage. And a cycling hold is where you just trace the same drawing three or four times uh, and repeat it for 12 frames. And this allows your viewer just to have like one second to get oriented in your scene because there's a lot going on here. There's going to be a lot of colors and have some like snow flying by. And, um, and I don't want to have that be overwhelming before the action starts. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this first frame here and we're not going to use the video footage at this point. Uh, I'm going to turn on onion skinning, which is this little button here, and um, right now I have the onions getting set to screen, so I'm going to go and adjust the settings here because it's too bright. Now I can put it on multiply. Do this. Now a handy little feature of this is that you can select a frame and you can colorize it, and that just allows you to see the difference between the line that you're drawing and the line that's already there. Um, so I've selected the second frame of my drawing sequence here, and I'm just going to trace as closely as I can the lines that I already have. Okay, so there's drawing number two. Now um, I'm actually going to show you a little trick to keep your drawings from evolving as you trace them unintentionally. And that is I'm going to move layer two over here up one. And now I'm going to draw on layer number four, but I'm going to be tracing from the same drawing. I mean, basically there's not as much variation in the way that I trace if I do it that way. So here we go again. Okay, uh, so I've got four frames now that are essentially all the same thing. I'm going to switch this back to its original color here. So we have one, oh, and I'm going to turn off onion skinning so we don't get that funny thing. Um, one, two, three, four. So I can take these four frames and select them. And over here in the layer panel, I'm just going to duplicate them once and 
twice. So now I have a full second of what is a cycling hold. Oops, looks like I forgot the earring on some of these frames. That one. Just try to disconnect back on, draw the earring. So you can use this to your advantage. I mean, if you're the first second or so of your video footage is really the person just not moving at all and just holding the pose, or maybe they're just moving their hand, um, you can create a hold and that will save you some work. Now obviously I'd have to go back and color this, but I would do the same thing with the color. I would make four frames of the color um, so that it still gets a little bit of that shimmer, and then I would just repeat it as long as necessary. So now, um, now we can move on to getting into the real footage part. So I'm going to go over here at the end of my second. Um, now I have another blank frame here. And what I have to do is I need to move my video footage because I've kind of stopped that. You know, and I might be able to cheat it a little bit because I'm not really moving that much. Um, so let's turn this layer off here. And you can see... My head is starting to go down. Um, okay. Yeah, I might not be able to cheat it too much. So I'm going to turn onion skinning back on. And uh, I'm going to change the onion skinning option, blending mode, to screen just so that I can see it a little bit differently uh, and it doesn't get super dark and hard to see here. Um, but everything else I'm just going to be tracing directly from the video footage. Okay, and now just comes the grunt mark. Okay, so you can see there's starting to be a little bit of movement. Um, Obviously, I have a long way to go, but now that I've got my workflow set up, I can pound through these frames fairly quickly. Um, so my process would be that I'm going to get the outline done first. Then I would start a new animation layer. Um, and the way that you would do that is using this handy-dandy little button. Uh, and there you've got a nice new layer here. And I would put the color on this layer. Now this one would want to go down below the line work. So I can just move that down here. And this would be called line. Um, and then this way I can color, you know, without interrupting the line. So I could use whatever palette I was using. I think I had this as the skin tone. Um, and I was using just a regular brush. etc. Et I probably want to go back and do a little bit of cleanup. Oops, make sure you have the right layers selected. And that, folks, is how it's done. Um, so there's another tutorial on how to export once you've finished your coloring and your drawing. Um, and you can add all of your layers and everything. Um, and you can just export directly from Photoshop to an H.264 1920 by 1080 and turn it in.